a week ago, we spoke about the question of the term doomers, which I think is quite unhelpful um, because lots of us who believe that we are in very serious trouble as a result of AGI um, dawning, whether it has dawned or is about to, doesn't matter. Um, but lots of us who think that there is very serious jeopardy to humanity from this uh, would be outside of the limits of what that term apparently refers to, which is Yudkowsky and uh, others who see the world as he does, who think that the likelihood of our complete extinction is extremely high if we do not take utterly drastic action, uh, including a pause on all research um, on large language models. Um, and extreme governmental authority to enforce that globe-wide, including things like airstrikes on server farms that participate in experiments that are unauthorized, etc. So the reason I bring it back up is that an exchange unfolded on Twitter. Uh, Yudkowsky responded to a clip of us talking about an example that he deployed in which he had argued that the mm. AI might order up a virus that would uh, infect a large fraction of the human population uh, by being very contagious while not being highly virulent, um, that it would make a small modification to the brain such that people would become highly susceptible on uh, playing of a certain tone. I took him to task. I said, um, there's lots of bad things that can happen here. That's not one of them. Um, and that he has some obligation. If he's going to say, look, there are lots of ways that this could go very, very wrong, that he has to deliver examples that are plausible. And that when it comes to biology, I just think he is displaying that he misunderstands. So Zach, do you want to show the, so here Eliezer says, uh, at Brett Weinstein, one, what is your understanding of my claim that a superintelligence could design a virus that would rapidly propagate through a large chunk of the population? Two, what do you think is impossible about your version of that claim? Okay, now, that is not what I was objecting to. I tried to be as complete as I could inside of a single tweet, and I said, Quote, design won't work in the foreseeable future, but uh, specify modifications to existing viruses is clearly possible. Just ask EcoHealth Alliance, who participated in work that did just that, which very likely escaped the lab in Wuhan creating the COVID pandemic is what I'm alluding to. I continued. The part I found preposterous was that a virus leads to cognitive control of all infected or post-infection humans. That doesn't square with reality. Eliezer responds. He says, why not? Toxoplasmosis is not a thing, question mark. No virus can possibly damage or modify brain structures. I don't get what you think you know can't happen. He continues. Is your objection more like one? It is not physically possible for there to be such a thing as a viral syndrome that e.g. damages the amygdala and modifies the auditory nerve, or two, not even a superintelligence can design, or if you weirdly prefer, modify a virus, which does. We won't continue his tweet. You want to go to the next screenshot? Yeah, I'm going to read this one. It's a bit smaller. Um, I think I can almost get it. Let's skip the one on the top there. So Eliezer, oh no, so uh, another account... Yeah, another account responds from Brett's video, quote, the idea that it is going to produce a novel, novel biota that is going to embarrass natural selection, this is a dead end. The AI is constrained to the same biological logic that creatures are. Um, I think that this is closest to one, one of two, of two the, first the biologically two. impossible alternative that Eliezer spells out. Eliezer responds, cool, then it should be no trouble for Brett Weinstein to tell us uh, those key facts of which I am ignorant, by which it is known to him that a superintelligence may not do that. May no more do this. May no more do this than travel faster than light. Okay, I will not continue reading his tweet. I think that's the substance of it. Then I respond, stunning that you think it's a matter of facts about yeah. which you are either aware or not. Your understanding... Uh, 
You're misunderstanding fundamentals of a complex process and projecting into the gap logic about a roughly analogous, complicated process while demanding uh, action that is sure to increase the risk. He says, okay, so you don't actually know of any reason a superintelligence can't build a virus that infects a lot of uh, people in a month or why that virus can't tweak brain structures. Next screenshot. Okay. Um, then another account, uh, Yair Levy responds, Brett, respectfully, this is the mother of all event horizons, and if you're not and you are not treating it as such. Um, I respond to him. I wish that was the case, but the difference in our perspectives apparently leads to a nearly to nearly opposite prescription, so I don't think it's minor at all. Uh, Eric Tornberg responds, you and Eliezer Yukowski should discuss this on Dark Horse or some uh, other discussion forum. Happy to be helpful. I said I'm willing, could be very productive. And then as far as I know, no response from Eliezer. So, um, I can't remember what the last one is. You want to show it? Oh, okay. This is uh, Yair Levy again. I hope I'm pronounced it's going to be Lavi. Lavi, sorry. Yeah. It's hard to read at this distance. Um, who uh, quote tweets a Wittgenstein quote. Wittgenstein is a favorite of mine, actually. And the quote is, when I hear people arguing, uh, so yeah. this is, this is uh, Lavi talking. He says, when I hear people arguing about what a superintelligence could or could not do, I'm immediately reminded of Wittgenstein's uh, uh, Wittgenstein's immortal words, whereof one cannot speak, thereof one must be silent. Okay? All your speculations are meaningless here. Okay, so. Was he speaking to you? Yes. Yeah. So, first of all, I want to respond to him and say, this can't possibly be meaningless if the prescriptions, if the thing about which we are differing results in in a near inversion of what we think the right course of action is. If two people who believe that we face something very serious and that we must take the most reasonable action going forward disagree on what that action is, then settling small differences like this is apparently important. Well, it also seems like, you know, this is, you hadn't shown me these before. Um, the Wittgenstein quote <clears throat> seems to be taken and it's like sensu stricto narrowest sense, that is, um, to, again, as Yudkowsky suggests, be looking for just the facts. Just tell me what I need to know, and then I'll go ahead and do it. Um, which entire, and I, I don't, <clears throat> I'd have to remind myself of all of what Wittgenstein did, but I don't think that he was actually a sensu stricto sort of a, a thinker. He was much more, he, he was much more expansive. And I don't think that he would have read his, w would have interpreted his own words here to mean, if you can't tell me exactly prescriptively what it is um, that will happen if X, then then we, we ought not be talking about it. Or I don't remember exactly what the end of the quote was. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, it feels to me like, you and Yukowski are having a um, well. It's frankly, it's a biolog uh, it's a biologist versus an engineer's understanding of the universe. It's a complex systems versus machines understanding versus complicated of, systems versus complicated systems understanding of the universe. And you know what you are saying, what we have we have said also, uh, is just because this was created and is therefore a complicated system doesn't mean uh, that complex systems aren't related to what is going on here and your misunderstanding, your, your failure to recognize the role that complex systems would play means that you will misstep. And so it's, I think what Yukowski has done is he said, oh, I'll just take some of the complex system stuff over here and make it do the thing I want it to do. It's like you've conflated complex with complicated. Yeah, is that, he's, is he's, that... he's conflated complex with complicated, and there has been a radical but subtle inversion of the burden of proof as a result of this, right? Yes. He's saying, can you prove this is impossible? Right. And the point is that in no universe is that my obligation. Right. You have alleged something. It doesn't square with the biology, right? And his focus, I'm not going to get too deeply into this because at the end of the day, I think we need to have that conversation and we need mm -hmm. to have it out because... And I will say this up front. If you are correct, Eliezer, I want you to win that debate. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. I have children. I have an interest in them having a planet. If you're right, I want you to win the debate. But if I'm right, you should want me to win the debate because it changes what we ought to do. That matters a great deal. And so um, there is a lot to say about a, his invoking the facts, his inverting the bur burden of proof. These things speak to what error I believe he is making. I'm certainly aware of toxoplasmosis and will be happy to talk about its uh, relationship to this puzzle. You know, it certainly does suggest that modifications of behaviors by pathogens are readily possible. I, you know, it was well known to me when I weighed in on this discussion, of course, mm -hmm. and I can come up with a bunch of other examples if you'd like them. But the question Zombie is- Zombie ants. From cordyceps. Right, from cordyceps. We talk about rabies. We can talk about all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, but nonetheless, I think we have to have that debate. And um, I don't know whether it is necessary. It's possible in light of the difficulty uh, of even following the threads on Twitter, given the way replies make it hard to find things. It's possible Eliezer didn't see that. But I suspect that he just basically walked away from the discussion with, oh, well, then you don't have the goods, do you? Mm -hmm. And that forces me to take, I mean, they're desperate times. Desperate measures are warranted. I'm going to take drastic action. Oh, God. Um, perhaps you should sit down. Should I get on the floor? Um, Eliezer, I double dog dare you to talk about this with me. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, I did. Mm. And I did. Okay. And there's no going back from that. So flagpole at three o'clock um, or <laughs> I don't know, somewhere. Uh, I don't know. I'm uh, I'm not good at this, but uh, but hopefully we could have a very productive discussion. I would, uh, in all seriousness, say I don't love the idea of debate. I think debate is pointless. I think dialectic is the way to do it, but most people don't really have a relationship with that concept. So debate might be a decent shorthand. But let's just have a discussion about what this is and why why you come to the conclusion that you do and why I come to a different one and what part we agree on and why the prescriptions differ so radically. Mm -hmm.